When you think of an SUV coupe, the segment owes its existence to the BMW X6. This is a nameplate that was introduced in America all the way back in 2008. And since then, the space has gotten so much success that other manufacturers quickly followed suit with their versions of a coupified midsize luxury SUV. Now, back in 2019, BMW introduced the all new third generation X6, of course, moving it to the all new architecture that also underpins its sister vehicle, the boxier BMW X5. And for 2000. 24, the X5 and X6 are getting its first full refresh. And they're pretty significant in the sense that we get uh, refreshed styling front and rear, updated powertrains with more power under the hood, and an all new interior with the latest version of BMW's iDrive 8.5. So as you can see this week, BMW has loaned us actually what is the base engine, this X6 xDrive 40i. And the big question I want answered, for those of you who are looking for a midsize executive luxury SUV, but you want something a little bit more unique versus the X5, X5 that your neighbor drives. How does this 2024 X5 xDrive 40 stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the updated exterior styling for 2024, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this X6. Now, BMW still offers a choice of three different powertrains in the X6. However, this one that I'm showing you here is actually the base engine. It's the company's signature B58 three liter turbocharged inline six. Now you guys should be quite familiar with this engine. BMW essentially built its reputation, of course, on building inline six cylinder engines. And this is one of the best in the industry. It's a three liter turbocharged. It's got a single turbo with a twin scroll design, double overhead, double overhead cam inline six. Now the engine actually did get massaged this year to, de to de deliver more power, about 40 more horsepower versus the 2023 model. Now we have a total of 375 horsepower and 398 pound feet of torque. It is assisted electric by BMW's 48 volt mild hybrid system. So it's a mild hybrid designed to improve the start stop and improve the fuel efficiency. Uh, and compared to last year, this model makes 40 more horsepower, which is a pretty significant jump. But of course, those are German horsepower. This vehicle's engine is probably underrated. If you actually hook it up to a dyno, it's probably making around 375 horsepower at the wheels. Now, fuel economy is rated at 23 in the city, 26 on the highway. This vehicle comes standard with xDrive all-wheel drive, which is different versus the X5, this car's sister vehicle. That comes standard with rear-wheel drive. BMW makes their all-wheel drive system standard on this vehicle here. It's paired up with an eight-speed ZF source automatic transmission with paddle shifters and launch control, of course. Um, this vehicle should get to 60, BMW says, in around 5.2 seconds. It'll reach a top speed of around 155 miles an hour when you guys have the M Sport Professional package, like my test car here. Uh, and in terms of towing, this is still an SUV. With the tow package, this thing will tow a maximum of 7,200 pounds. And as this car sits, it weighs in at just a tick over 5,000 pounds. But let's go ahead and close up this hood and talk about the exterior styling. Now, I will admit in the intro, I accidentally called it an X5, and that probably won't be the last time that I called this thing an X5. And that's because from the front end, from basically this angle, you probably could easily confuse it for an X5 because the two vehicles look exactly the same. Now, my particular test car for 650 bucks is painted in this uh, very, very metallic-y shade of carbon black metallic. It actually has some uh, blue fleck undertone when you have it underneath the sunshine. It looks fantastic, especially when you guys pair it with the M Sport Professional package, which basically throws in the extended shadow line package that blacks out the twin kidney grills, which got a little bit enlarged. It has active grill shutters. You have a front camera system, of course, and then the headlights, you can see these are the BMW full LED headlights with uh, dynamic turn signals. Uh, you also have LED daytime running lights, LED, uh, LED uh, turn signals, and LED low and high beams. No fog lights, but you do have uh, all weather lights. You can see this X6 does come standard with the M Sport package, which is typically like three grand extra on the X5, which means you have the more aggressive front end. You have the black painted front bumper as well on the lower fascia. You have more aggressive air intakes along with more functional openings to the side of the actual front bumper. There's some well-integrated parking sensors. Overall, I think the refresh is a huge success, just like on the X5. I think the front end of the X6 looks really mean, especially when you guys go for some darker colors. I personally would probably go for the Brooklyn Gray metallic exterior. 
and it pairs really nicely with the shadow line package. It's just a little bit too much black for my taste on this particular test card. I'm moving around the side profile. You can see this is a, a life cycle impulse or a mid cycle refresh. That's what BMW calls it. They call it an LCI. So the, sh the basic shape and silhouette is the same. This vehicle is built on the cluster architecture. It has the same 117.1 inch wheelbase as the X5. It has a 195 inch long overall length. So it's about a uh, half an inch longer than the X5 uh, and it's around three inches lower than the X5. They're, they're exactly the same width. So again, you have that swoopier coupe styling, which I'll show you guys in just a moment. This vehicle is available with a two axle air suspension. My test car has the fixed suspension with adaptive dampers. It's an independent front, independent rear. You can see the M Sport package includes these massive 15 inch brakes, uh, which are clamped down by four piston uh, red painted calipers. You can also get them painted in blue if you'd like. And then these for $2,000 extra are the 22 inch wheels wrapped in a 275-35 R22 uh, Pirelli, P0, or Pirelli summer tire uh, on this particular model. These wheels definitely I would prefer a little bit more cushion. You can also option in a 20, which is standard, and then a 21 inch wheel for 950 bucks. The rear tires are even fatter. They're a 315 by 30 R22. So again, big meaty tires that gives this thing an aggressive stance, but this is not good wheels and tires for the snow that I have around. So keep that in mind if you guys live in colder climates. You can see the wheel arch trim is body colored, which I love. There's some functional air vents over here. The mirrors are electrically folding. They're painted body color. They have your integrated camera and your integrated turn signals. The shadow line package essentially blacks out all the chrome trim. There's a panoramic glass roof that's included on this trim. I think it's part of the executive package. And then moving uh, back here, let's take a look at the silhouette. You can see that sloping SUV coupe style the X6 basically pioneered it, and a lot of other SUVs have copied it. This is probably my least favorite angle of the X6. I personally think that Porsche and Genesis with the GV80 Coupe did a better job with their SUV Coupe styling. I actually even think the GLE, the current GLE, may even look better from the rear. But again, that styling is always subjective. I personally think the X5 is a handsome looking boxy SUV already. You can see because this is the Coupified SUV, you have this little tasteful spoiler at the back. There's no rear window wiper. BMW deletes it because this is like a coupe. You have this little integrated rear lip spoiler on the back, and you can see the taillights have a very skinny design. They have full LEDs for the turn signal, the brake lights, the reverse lights, there's badging here, X6 and then xDrive 40i badging, um, which shows that you have the base engine, although it has a ton of power for a base motor, you'll see that in the driving scene. And then down here you can see the M Sport package, which is included, includes a more aggressive rear diffuser and you get these dual chrome exhaust tips, which are kind of built into the bumper. It's also blacked out. This has also the Sport exhaust because it has the M Sport package. Uh, let's fire it up and so you can hear how that straight six sounds. <laughs> And I must admit, for a base engine, this thing has a fantastic noise. So keep that in mind. You don't necessarily need to go to the V8 if you guys want this vehicle. Now, looking at the cargo area, that sloping roof is going to compromise the space a little bit compared to the X5. And you can see a power lift gate's included. It's also hands-free. And compared to the X5, this vehicle with the uh, second row seats up, there's no third row. Uh, it offers around 27 cubic feet of space. That's around seven cubic feet less versus the X5 with its boxier shape. You can see underneath here, you do have a temporary spare tire. That's an extra 250 bucks along with the necessary kits. There's a little bit of underfloor storage. If you fold down the seats back here, it'll expand the cargo to just under 60 cubic feet. That's pretty much on par with the other competitors that are mid-sized, that are coupified SUVs. But keep in mind, the X5, which is a little bit shorter, but it's a boxier shape, offers 72 cubic feet of space. So again, if you want maximum cargo, you might as well just go for the X5. You're gonna pay for it in terms of practicality with that sloping roof. So moving on to the interior of this 2024 BMW X6. You'll have to excuse how dirty is on the outside. I tried to keep the interior, however, as clean as possible. As you can see, it, there is a ton of snow surrounding us. But before we get inside the vehicle, let me go. Let me show you guys the key fob. You can see all X6s essentially come standard with BMW's Intelligent Access fob. This is their newest key that they introduced on their newer products. It includes remote start from the fob itself. If you get the option for it, you basically push the lock, the BMW button three times in sequence. It'll remote start the vehicle. You also have your unlock feature. You have your remote trunk open feature, and then your panic feature. BMW also offers their digital key where you can use your phone as a key or uh, a key card to actually access the vehicle. And then BMWs also have a feature where, as you notice, I approached the vehicle, it unlocked the door because I have the key on me, it unlocked the or unfolded the mirrors as well. 
it also has a walk away auto lock feature and an unlock feature. You can turn both of those features off if you prefer. You can see the door handle is conventional, um, but I actually really like that feature. It just makes getting in and out of the vehicle a lot more convenient. Now, you can see the sapphire black exterior of my test vehicle is complemented very nicely by the Cognac Sensifin uh, interior. This is technically a faux leather material. It's a fake leather, but as you can see, it looks fantastic. It feels and smells like real leather. It's got heated and ventilated seats as well. And these also have the multi contour seats, which means there are 20 way adjustments for both the front passenger for both the front seats. Uh, the driver also gets a two person memory. My test car is just missing for an extra thousand bucks the front massaging seats, which I personally would just add for a thousand bucks. It'll make the interior even more luxurious. But these seats, I have to say, for a not real leather material, they're among the best and they just look fantastic with the sapphire black. You can see the door panel has some uh, real Sensatec, or it's the faux leather stitching on the upper portion, aluminum door handle here, padded armrest over here. You can see the window controls, they're one touch up down for all four. Uh, and this, you know, the controls, they have a nice high quality uh, feel to them, uh, to the buttons and how they click. Uh, you have this kind of dark, shiny uh, wood trim that's available uh, that you can also option in a uh, matte finish if you prefer. My test car also has the Harman Kardon premium stereo. Down here you can see it's got the soft touch injection molded plastic and then there's a pretty good amount of door pocket storage as well. The M Sport package included on this test on this vehicle as well includes the M Sport alloy pedals and the M badging on the door sill which again, all makes for a great first impression. Now as I get inside the vehicle you can see the X6 has a nice easy step in height as I shut the door. The door has a nice solid sounding thunk, and I believe it also has a soft close feature. So I wasn't expecting that, but again, this vehicle is almost $90,000. So it definitely is gonna have some nice touches. Now starting the vehicle up, you can see uh, start stop button is right here by the crystal shifter. Just put your foot on the brake. The vehicle will essentially whir to life, and that's because it has a 48 volt mild hybrid system. So there's no traditional starter noise. Instead, it just kind of comes to life like it's a hybrid. You can see there's a different look to the gauge display if you change it into a sport mode here, where it adds a tachometer, the engine. One of my favorite sounding engines, I mean, BMW is known for their inline sixes, so it doesn't surprise me that it still sounds fantastic in this vehicle, even though this is the entry level engine. Now, looking at the steering wheel, you can see this is the M Sport specific wheel that's included when you guys go for all X6s because they all come with the M Sport package. You can see it's got leather over the airbag cover. It's got the M Sport badging. It's got really fat, you know, a uh, thick rim where it's leather wrapped as well. You have a power tilt telescoping function with these paddles on the wheel. This controls the driver assistance tech with the driver assistance professional package. You also have audio controls here, the horn. It sounds good and nondescript, but appropriate given the size of this vehicle. And then you can see on the rest of the dash, it has beautiful leather stitching along the upper portion of the dash, more of that black fine line uh, wood trim along with this kind of new dashboard. As you guys can see, there's the latest version of BMW's iDrive system, although technically it's 8.5. The latest version is 9.0, but you still have a 12.3 inch instrument panel here. And then you have a 14.5 inch display here that's also a touchscreen. This is again among the bigger screens in the industry. BMW has been adopting this kind of one screen. Uh, but it comp it's comprised of two different screens layout. You can see the CarPlay looks very good. It takes up the entire screen. It's a, uh, on the 14 and a half inch display. It also has wireless Android Auto and CarPlay with over the air updates. The downside, of course, by going from the older system to this system is now the climate controls are located in the screen. So that's something to kind of get used to. But once you get used to it, it's, it's pretty easy to understand. You can see the uh, controls to adjust the heated and cooled seat controls and the heated steering wheel is actually in the screen. Again, that takes some time to get used to, but once you get used to it, you can see all your usual icons are located right there where you can access you know, all your different sources and whatnot. You can adjust your drive, driving settings. You can adjust the interior ambient lighting, which by the way, this interior ambient lighting looks fantastic at night. And you can also change the color to multiple different colors if you guys prefer. Uh, you can also see it kind of mimics that on the dash. The interior lighting in this vehicle really just looks even better at night. So highly recommend trying this vehicle at night and going for that um, executive package that rolls that in that feature uh, that just kind of makes the interior even nicer. If I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's your full top-down 360 camera, the panoramic view. It's got trajectory, it has front and rear parking sensors, it has cross-traffic braking. BMW does a fantastic job with their uh, camera quality and resolution. You can see you can basically scroll around the vehicle, which is a nice touch. And it really just kind of adds to the whole ambiance and the effect and just makes driving this vehicle even better. You can, 
Um, so again, that's an option to consider if you guys are looking at this vehicle, make sure you go for that parking assistance technology package. You can see there's the embedded GPS, which the embedded GPS is fine, but I probably, most people are probably just gonna use the CarPlay function anyways. Um, going to your music sources here, you can see the iDrive system is definitely relatively easy to use and it doesn't really have too much of a learning curve. Um, most people are just gonna use the CarPlay anyways. You just have to get used to the fact that you have to use the screen now to access things. There's still the controller here if you guys prefer not to touch the screen and get your fingerprints all over it. But I think most people are gonna use the screen. There's also nice hard buttons, uh, hard shortcut buttons. You can see more of that beautiful wood. Open this up, you can see there's your wireless phone charging pad, two USB charging ports, another storage area over here. The glass crystal controls are included when you guys go for the executive package. Uh, I love the shifter here as well. Although BMW used to have a more, I guess, a bigger shifter. Now they've just kind of gone to this little toggle. Uh, again, it's pretty simple and it doesn't take up as much space, but some of you may prefer an actual shifter shifter. Your drive mode selector is here. There's a comfort, there's a sport, and then there's an eco pro. Uh, and there's also a downhill assist control. If I had the air suspension, you'd have a toggle here where I could raise and lower the vehicle as well. You can see padded center console here, open this up. It's a little shallow, but there's a USB-C charging port and a USB-A charging port is as well over there. So um, overall, it's definitely still very nice. The seats, you can see, I mentioned earlier, fake leather, but they are very comfortable and supportive. They adjust in 20 different ways, just lacking the massage. I would probably get the massage for an extra thousand bucks. Uh, the glove compartment you can see here is going into the dash. It's big, it's damped, and it's lined with felt. You have an auto dimming rear view mirror, cloth over the headliner. There's also a panoramic sky lounge roof, which also illuminates at night. and has kind of LED lighting that goes through it. You can also open up this panoramic roof over the two front seats, which is also a very nice touch. Lets you vent air, and you can also open it up a little bit larger if you prefer. Um, but overall, as you can see, the interior, definitely still a really great place to spend time. It's full of the latest BMW tech that also is surprisingly easy to use. High quality materials, not a single squeak and rattle. It feels like, you know, a very expensive luxury car. And that's kind of what you get when you guys go for the X5 and the X6, uh, because BMW just has a really great interior that they pair with it. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat because you do have to make some compromises with the X5 or with the X6 versus the X5. Now, obviously the roof line is lower. It's about three inches lower than the X5. Even though this vehicle is a little bit longer, you do lose about an inch and a half of headroom back here and about two inches of legroom back here. So BMW says you have around 35.7 inches of legroom versus the 37.4 in the X5. Um, again, you do have to deal with the, you know, the sloping area, the rear door panel materials. They are nice still. You have the Sensatec leather on the upper and the lower portion, aluminum door handles. You get these retractable sunshades padded over here. You have more of the wood, the metal speaker covers, and then it's padded down here as well. So that's all very nice. The seats, you can see they do fold down in a 60-40 manner, so you can kind of expand the cargo area nicely, but this seat doesn't move forward and back. It also doesn't allow you to recline seat, so it's kind of just fixed into position. As I get back here, you can see legroom at 35 and a point four inches is certainly good. This is where I'd have the seat to drive. Uh, I can get comfortable pretty well in here. Uh, there's good foot space. There's a big hump here that's gonna intrude on the middle passenger because of the rear drive shaft tunnel. You have rear seat air vents. You have four zone climate control, which is nice. You have heated rear seats, but no cooled seats back here. So that's a little disappointing. You have two storage pockets over here. And then there's also an armrest that folds down and then gives you two cup holders and a little bit of storage. So overall, space back here you can see as i sit back my head if i lean back gets very close to the ceiling so if you're over six feet this is where the sloping roof is going to eat into some of your space obviously there's also a little area here where there's a usb another one over here where you can kind of get a tablet installed back here as part of a dealer accessory but overall the back seat is certainly useful just be sure to take a look at the x5 if you have taller friends and you need more legroom and more headroom space so it's been a few years since I had a chance to spend a full week with the BMW X6. I think the last one that I had back home was the uh, M version, the M competition. And let's be honest, that car was pretty amazing, but it was also pretty darn expensive and just way too much power for what most people are going to want and use this vehicle for. So this week, as you can see, BMW has loaned us, which I believe is actually the sweet spot in the engine family. I mean, yes, there are, you know, two different V8s in the X6, but this engine the three liter twin power single turbo inline six with a new 48 volt mild hybrid system. This is the engine that BMW is known for. They're known for their straight sixes. Uh, it got a significant 40 horsepower boost this year. 
uh, making 375 horsepower. BMW claims 5.2 seconds. Now, the last time I tested this engine, I was in the X7 on this stretch of road where it, where that car is about 500 pounds heavier than this vehicle, but we have the same engine with the eight-speed auto. This comes standard with the company's X-Drive all-wheel drive. I have it in Sport Plus right now. The uh, eight-speed auto does have launch control, so we've got it in all Sport Plus for everything. We'll brake torque it. Ooh, this thing feels fast. Woo. Wow, nice sound. All right, we got zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. So that is about 0.3 seconds faster than what BMW's claim is at 5.2. And let's be honest here, that powertrain is just buttery. It's silky smooth. It has a nice throaty inline six snarl that you love. It's got a wonderful eight speed auto. It's got standard X drive all wheel drive. That is honestly enough engine for most people, especially when you consider the fuel economy benefits that you get with this inline six mild hybrid. The last time I actually tested this inline six as well, I was in the X5 plug-in hybrid, which that car is about a half a second faster than this vehicle. Remember the plug-in hybrid carries around an additional 500 pounds of weight. So this is, you know, it makes a pretty big difference when you don't have the electric motor dragging it down in terms of weight. Let's just floor it his time, no brake torquing it. Definitely doesn't feel as quick when you don't use the launch control, but it still sounds good. 5.26 there, that's with it more going slightly uphill. So no launch control, more going uphill, that's essentially BMW's time, but when you have it on a more level surface with launch control, 4.9 seconds all day long. I mean, that is incredible to consider that this is the base engine. And that's precisely why I just don't know if the V8 is worth it because I tested the X5 M60i, uh, which has the 4.4 liter V8 with 523 horsepower. That did it in around 4.2 seconds. So again, it's around 0.8 seconds uh, faster. Uh, versus this, this model here, which I think this is gonna be enough power for most people. I mean, most people are just don't need to, you know, do zero to 60 in the low fours to under four second range. But this is again, wonderful. Now in terms of the handling dynamics, this is a BMW. It's built on this, off of the cluster architecture. Remember, this is a rear drive platform, but it comes standard with all wheel drive. Um, the car itself, for a vehicle that weighs 5,000 pounds, the X5 and the X6 essentially drive like sports sedans. They just drive like a taller sports sedan. My tester, of course, has the M Sport Professional package, so we have the upgraded brakes, uh, these upgraded 22-inch wheels, which are still technically optional. We've got adaptive dampers, but uh, I'm missing, or this model that I'm driving is missing the $1,000 for the uh, two-axle air suspension. And I probably would check that option box for it just because it'll improve the ride and handling and give you a little bit more off-road capability because of the ability to raise and lower the suspension up to uh, three inches. But I have to say, for a vehicle on 22 inch wheels, this car actually rides surprisingly well. And that's kind of the reason why I love. <laughs> oh, love that sound. You know, this car also has the M Sport exhaust. And I have to say, even when it has the Sport exhaust and Sport Plus, the engine could be louder, but BMW obviously wanted it to be still very subdued because this is a luxury car and it gives you that luxury car ride, even in Sport Plus. I'm sitting here, you know, with the car in its stiffest suspension setting and it still has a very plush ride quality. I mean, obviously it's not like, you know, cushy, you know, pillowy Lincoln soft, but it's still comfortable enough to where you feel a little bit of the road vibrations coming through, but just enough to give you enough feedback. It's got really quick and sharp direct steering, although the steering feel is numb, but that's kind of the case with a lot of electric power steering assist systems. No four wheel steering, but put my foot down here. <laughs> The 48 volt hybrid system, remember, adds around uh, 27 horsepower, I believe, and 142 pound-feet of torque. You essentially feel it at low speeds, just filling in the gaps because you know you do have to wait for that turbocharger to spool up. Um, the electric motor kind of provides the instantaneous thrust off the line. It also helps with the start-stop feature, and then you also get that rush from the turbocharged engine, which just sounds incredible. But Going around some corners, I do love the way this thing drives. I love the way it handles, I love the, the view out of the front, the side is good. The view out of the back actually isn't horrible either, although BMW doesn't offer a, a digital camera review mirror. But that eight speed, it just kind of reads my mind. It puts the engine right in the meat of its power band. It just downshifts when I want it to. It upshifts when I want it to. It has these really responsive paddles as well. Listen to that sound, guys. 
<laughs> it makes even that nice little burble and pop sound from the exhaust, so I love it. I absolutely love it. But let's go ahead and switch it over here to uh, the automatic setting. We'll actually go to comfort. We'll put the transmission into its drive setting as well. And this is where most people are gonna drive the X5, and this is where the iconic sounds actually gets quieter, because the engine is actually producing a fake sound through the speakers as well. You can turn that on and off, but it's loudest in Sport Plus. But in this mode here, it's very quiet. There's very little road, wind, engine noise. Uh, very, you know, just free of annoyances. The ride gets even softer. When I put my foot down, there's no tack, but it still accelerates nicely. I mean, obviously I'm noticing the transmission's not gonna be quite as enthusiastic about getting out of its top gears, but it's still a fantastic driving vehicle, even in comfort mode here. And you get that luxury car feel. You get that dual personality. That's kind of what's important when you drive a vehicle like this. This car also has the driver assistance professional package, although my tester is not the earliest or the latest rendition where it adds like that highway auto lane change where you can essentially just look to the right or left mirror and the car will see that and it'll start to initiate a lane change. I haven't tried it yet, but again, BMW said it's coming on X5s and X6s built after March of 2024. This is February. Um, so. That'll be part of that $2,000 driver assistance professional package. In terms of fuel efficiency, I was shocked actually with how efficient this engine is because it's rated at 23, 26, 24 combined. I averaged right around 24 in mostly city driving, which is impressive. On the highway, this thing will do close to 30 miles to the gallon. I got 29 MPG, which is fantastic. You're realistically looking at just over 500 miles of range on a full tank. I was able to match that. The computer was showing around 570 miles of range. So again, that range is excellent. That's you know, basically what you expect like a lot of hybrid vehicles like a Lexus RX plug-in hybrid would do or a hybrid RX 350H would do. So impressive, again, how BMW is able to put such efficiency with such great power. It's got a perfect combination of the two. And that's probably the reason why I personally think the inline six is the engine to get. It just has the best of both worlds. Yes, it's not quite as fast or ferocious as the V8. I love the V8 still. Love the fact that BMW offers it. But remember the V8 is gonna cost you at least $20,000 more on the M60 around, uh, and, the, and the M version is another $35,000 on top of the M60. So it's like 50 grand more if you guys want the V8. So again, there's something to be said if you guys are looking for you know, the look of this, but you don't wanna necessarily pay that six figure price tag, this inline six delivers all the goods at a much lower price tag and it's gonna have enough performance for probably about 95% of people who are looking in this segment. So with a little over 10,000 units sold in America in 2023, the BMW X6 has been a surprising sales success for the company, which is why BMW has kept the X6 name around for about three generations now. And after spending a full week with the latest version of the X6, it's pretty easy to see why so many people choose this and its sister vehicle, the X5. In fact, in terms of sales, the X5 obviously outsold this vehicle. BMW did around 72,000 X5s in the US last year. So it outsold it basically seven to one, but it's pretty easy to see why people People tend to choose the X5. This vehicle, even though it looks sleeker and it promises a sportier driving dynamic, it is going to be more expensive and less practical. But after driving this vehicle for a week, I have to say, I am pretty shocked with how the base engine performs. BMW is known, of course, for their straight six turbo engines. Uh, and this engine doesn't disappoint. As you guys saw, zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds is plenty fast for most people. I mean, the V8 will probably shave almost a second off. Uh, you can also go for the X6M competition, which I also had a chance to test about three years ago. That's going to be a little bit overkill for most people. Uh, in terms of the handling, this thing basically just drives like a tall BMW 5 Series. It's the same thing, of course, with the X5, its sister vehicle. The interior updates BMW made. I love the new iDrive 8.5. I love the new 14 and a half inch touchscreen. The interior also has a solidly built, well-made feel to it. It feels high quality. It smells luxurious in there. It's full of comfortable seats and nice materials. It has a back seat also that is still pretty usable, but again, you lose about uh, an inch and a half of headroom and about an inch or two inches of legroom compared to the X5. So there are a lot of compromises with this vehicle and that's probably why personally for me, I would skip the X6 because I personally don't think the look of the coupified SUV or the coupe profile improves the look of this vehicle. I personally would just go with an X5 and it's also going to end up saving you some money because if you guys wanna get your hands on this vehicle, uh, it obviously is already on sale and you can basically get into a base version of the X6 and XDrive 40 uh, starting at just under $74,000. Now 74 grand is a whopping $9,000 more than the base price of the X5 with this same engine. Now that's gonna come with an asterisk because the X5 comes standard with rear wheel drive 
and it doesn't come standard with the M Sport package. If you add those features back in to basically make it almost nearly equipped as this vehicle, the X5 is going to start at around 70,900. So in reality, the base or the price diff delta is around three to four thousand dollars for the coupified version of the BMW X6. Now my tester here has a lot of options on it. Uh, it has it adds the executive package, the M Sport professional package, the driver assistance professional package. It's got the 22 inch wheels, the carbon black exterior or color on the exterior, and then the uh, cognac sensafin on the inside. All in my particular tester here, stickers for 87,545. I know almost 90 grand for this vehicle sounds like a ton of money. In fact, uh, if you want to spend around 20 grand more, you could also option for the V8, which is why I say skip the V8s because the V8 version of this is going to start at around $94,000. The M competition version of this car is around $130,000. So again, 50 grand more basically than the six cylinder for me personally, it's not worth it. But I think for me, if I was gonna do this vehicle, I would go with the X5 plug-in hybrid, which you can't even get on the X6. That car starts at around 72.5 and with options, keeping it moderate, you could probably get it in around $80,000. That's probably what I would pick for myself personally. But again, if you guys prefer the coupified look and you have some money to burn, but you don't necessarily need the V8, you should definitely put the X6 X Drive 40 at the very top of your list. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2024 BMW BMW X6 X Drive 40. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.